Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. My modem stopped working due to September 9th 99 bug. Opening your mouth just means getting more work. Ram that ram in. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. My modem stopped working due to September 9th 99 bug. Background, in the late 90s, I worked for a software company that wrote software for back-end offices of primarily fast food restaurants. I was a software developer, but when lines backed up, we were sometimes asked to help tech support. The bug, before the Y2K bug, there was its lesser known cousin the September 9th 99 bug. Some really old systems would use 9999 as a halt command, and they would also code the date September 9th 99 as 9999, so these two issues would lead to the September 9th 99 bug. I do not know of any instances where this bug actually happened, but the media hyped it a bit as an early stress test for the Y2K bug. While we did have to make changes to our code for Y2K, our code never used 9999 as a stop command and would have coded September 9th 99 as 990909. The cast, CSR equals customer service rep, client equals client. I was working that day, but not on the call. We all heard about it right after it happened. The story, client calls in complaining that the September 9th 99 bug has caused their modem to stop working. None of their stores were polled. Our software would use external modems so that the back office computers could pull each store's registers to see what was sold, etc., the previous day. CSR, sir, can you tell me what the lights on your modem look like? Client, modem? CSR, yes sir, the box with lights that probably sits on top of your computer. Client, oh that. It was making a funny sound last night, so I turned it off. CSR, sir, I think we've located the problem. It turned out that the client was so worried about the September 9th 99 bug, they stayed late, which they don't usually do. Self-fulfilling prophecy achieved. <laughs> Opening your mouth just means getting more work. I'm Dave. I've been asked to take over reporting duties for someone I'll call Sue who is going on an extended leave. About two months probably and she may not come back. Last week we met and reviewed her process. The first 10 minutes was spent in confusion by me asking her which tables she queried, what criteria she used, what time she kicked off the query, etc. etc. She doesn't do anything like that. She watches for emails that have a certain phrase in the subject line. She adds the ticket number listed in those emails to a spreadsheet that she keeps open all day. She tracks each ticket's progress based upon more emails. She tries to make sure it still qualifies for the report. Depending upon the email she may remove tickets from her spreadsheet. At a certain time every day she grabs the list of qualifying tickets from the spreadsheet and opens our ticketing application. She browses to each ticket and verifies the information is still current. She copies and pastes the information from various sections of the ticket into an email. Repeat steps 4 and 5 for each ticket. She formats the information and adds some boilerplate language for each ticket in the email. She sends the email to a coworker who manually reviews it for errors. There's normally at least one. She sends the result to our manager who gives it a brief once over and then sends it to the CEO of our Fortune 500 company. As I was hearing this on mute, I said to myself two things. First, life is short and full of wonders. Second, I'm not doing that. I listened to Sue for the first 10 minutes of her explanation and then ignored her. I focused on developing my own method. I'm a little embarrassed by that, but it is starting to become a habit. I couldn't do this before I started working from home and one day it will get me into trouble. Anyway, I created a report that will capture all of the relevant information, filtered by criteria that will pick out only the relevant tickets. 
I then manually prune some of the rows and feed the rest into a template that formats and presents all of the ticket details. All I have to do is copy and paste the result into the email and convert it from table to text. Creating this took about an afternoon. My process from when I run my report until I'm ready to send is about 10 minutes. I think I can embed the report into the template. If I do that and delegate the pruning to a macro the time will be only 5 minutes. I think Sue was spending 2 hours a day on this. At least. In terms of results my process is a lot less fallible. So far the coworker who does the review has found no errors, only little formatting nits that I corrected in the template. I predict that our manager will eventually deem her participation unnecessary, so that's about another 30 minutes saved. Today I had this exchange with a colleague I'll call Stan. We've worked together for many years. Dave, I cannot believe that someone in our company was using such an absurd report generation process. Especially for something that goes to the top. It still blows my mind. Stan, Dave, you know that group is infamous for this sort of things. Or should I say your group? Dave, don't lump me with the rest of the people here. You know we had that reorg. This has only been my group for a few months. Stan, whatever. So what did Sue say when you showed her the report and the template? Dave, I haven't showed it to her yet. We both report to Chuck now. It occurred to me that she will probably show it to him, and if she does he will become aware that what took her two plus hours now takes me five to ten minutes. I think he will cheerfully praise me, and then send me more work. Stan, probably. Dave, I've never done this before, but I'm thinking of keeping this to myself and telling no one. Stan, Dave, the real tragedy is that it took you 25 years to figure that out. Always, always keep your mouth shut. Ram that ram in. I was on site replacing ram for one of the finance guys at my workplace. That day, me and him just matched, in terms of outfit we wore. We both have short brown hair, relatively skinny, same build size, white shirts, black pants. He leaves to let me replace his RAM, I go under the desk to start opening up the computer, the following dialogue takes place. Sales lady walks in to talk to the finance guy, not realizing, he has left and she's actually talking to me who is under the desk. Sales lady, what are you doing you idiot? I have been called way worse on the job, so I just went along with it, it didn't bother me lol. Me. Albeit a little confused, replacing the RAM in this computer? Sales lady, yeah you ram that RAM in there. Implying a sexual joke. Me, with a smirk on my face, you don't know who you're talking to do you? Sales lady, sits down on the chair for customers pulls out her phone I know who I'm talking to, you freaking weirdo. Me, pops head up from behind desk with huge smile on my face. OMG her face looked like she just witnessed a murder. Sales lady, huge gasp OMG I am so sorry, I didn't realize, you and him are both in the same outfit. I am so 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 sorry. And again I'm just laughing my ass off, and then it gets better because the other guy walks in and looks super confused. I lost it. I was on the ground weak as hell. Once she explained the situation that just ensued, and we all had a good laugh I finished ramming the ram in there, and went on my way once he was booted up and good to go. It was just so perfect. It made my day.